I looked at our phones. And I said, those two young people over there are talking. Something wrong with this picture, I said. And they all, we all laughed and we all put our phones down and we actually started talking. I believe the message of God's love is even more important now because of our phone, because of our technology, because of our need to know that God loves us and that we need to love each other. All right? So that's the reason I'm bringing this message. Yeah, everybody's talking about love right now, too. Um, there's another part of it that we need to deal with, and we need to show our love to each other, God's love to each other. Amen? Amen. And some we need to know because I believe that part of loving each other is forgiving each other. Yes. <clears throat> we always like it when somebody, you know, please forgive me, and they say yes. But what about if somebody asks us if we will forgive them? What's the answer? It needs to be yes, correct? It needs to be yes. It's a two-way street. We need to sh receive forgiveness and we need to give forgiveness. Amen? Amen. And so, that's what it's all about. We need to forgive, and then there's another part that we'll be dealing with today. But forgiving one another, Jesus says, if we don't forgive, we can't have our sins forgiven. So it's very important that we do what Jesus has done for us. Let's see. I have no hands, but how many of us have hurt God more than other people have hurt us? Mm. If you really think about it, you really think about it, that's right. We have hurt him more than other people have hurt us. And so, if anything, we need to be asking for that forgiveness Amen. more than ever. And we need to be giving that forgiveness when people ask. And not say, well, if you don't do it again within the next five minutes. <laughs> or, as the Pharisee said, uh, after three times, no more forgiveness. Yeah. And Peter said, well, after how many times? Seventy times. Seven, seven times. He, Peter said seven. He, was, he, he realized that God was gracious, and he knew that it needed to be more than the Pharisees, not the three strikes in your act. He knew it needed to be more than that. And so he more than doubled it. Plus he thought, you know, seven was a perfect number, so, you know, I don't know. I'll have to ask him when I get to heaven. I'm not sure all his reasoning, but he said seven times. Jesus said, I heard it seven times seven. Right? And I think he also meant in there not to count. Correct? That's the whole process. This is my last forgiveness I'm giving you. This isn't 489 times. <laughs> we can't do it by ourselves. Amen. We have to ask God to do it in us and through us. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, I'm going to share the rest of it because I believe the definition of love is first here. Loving is using God's... Loving is... I can't usually... That thing there shows up and didn't do it this time, so I'm not to turn around. Alright, loving is using God's given, God-given power of choice to do that which is in the best interest of another person. another person, not ourselves, another person, regardless of our feelings. Amen? Amen. Amen. Forgiving is an essential part of love. If we cannot forgive, 
can't love. All right? So, two major steps. The first is accepting God's forgiveness for the hurt we have caused Him. And I really pray that we all can do that. Because that is important. Another way of saying is it, another way of saying it is forgiving ourselves. Okay? But don't say, oh, I can't forgive myself. Because in essence, you're saying, I can't accept God's forgiveness. Does that make it more? Yeah. We need to accept His forgiveness. We can't be saved. We can't live. Even here and now, we can't live without accepting His forgiveness. It's crucial. Super crucial. Alright? So that's the first step. Second step is in forgiving others for the hurt they have caused us. Alright? Forgiving others for the hurt they have caused us. And we're not, we're not dealing with the, the handouts yet, so hang on there. But those two important things are vital in our, in our ability to love. If we have a problem with one or both of those in our lives, we need to run to the cross, realize how much He loves us, Amen. and ask Him for the desire and the power to do both of these. Amen. Jesus said that the world would know you are followers of His if we have love one for another. Amen. We cannot have love one for another if we won't accept His forgiveness or we can't forgive others. It's that important. And to me, that's why He said that's where we're told in the spirit of prophecy that we need to share <coughs> the love of God. It's not that God loves you, mm -hmm. is that we need to accept His forgiveness and we need to forgive others. Amen? Amen. So, that's the two major steps. Now, I want to, I'm going to share with you eight steps to forgiving. <coughs> This is in your, this is in your handout. I apologize again. I do have a PowerPoint in Spanish, but I can't run both of them at the same time. All right. So number one, because there is the forgiving part, and then there is the what? Forgetting part. Forgetting part. Okay. And some of you may not be convinced yet, but I, before I'm done, I hope from God's Word uh, that uh, you will understand that forgetting is part of forgiving. Yes. All right? All right. So, forgetting means, and this is the most important one, it's not a case of holy amnesia. When God says He forgets your sins, does he all of a sudden, because he's that old, you know, he's, he's older than the hills, as they say, right? Mm -hmm. He's older, older, much older than the hills. He only ha always has been. Um, does that mean he just has something going wrong in his brain? That he, he, no, he chooses to forget. Um, so it's not a case of holy, am holy amnesia, which erases the past. No, instead it is an experience of healing which draws the poison from the wound. You may recall the hurt, but you will not relive it. Hmm. And just with a few people that I have seen, nobody nods their heads, um, but there are times the old enemy comes along and says, you remember when somebody did that to you and did this to you and and, and you sit there and you go, yeah, there you go. Oh, oh man, that was awful. That was, and he takes us on that on that visual 
reliving of that whole situation, right? Unless we stop and say, no, 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 that's from the devil, get out of here, Lord, take over. Give me something else to think about. <clears throat> Unless we do it, he keeps running that movie. And we can relive that so much that we go through all the emotions that we did when it happened. I'm not just talking about a bad dream. Sometimes he does that too. And we need to stop it the same way, Lord. Stop this thing. It's not from you. It doesn't follow Philippians 4.8. So get it out of my brain and give me something better to think about. Amen? Amen. So, true, the hornet of memory may fly again. But forgiveness has drawn or removed its sting. Mm -hmm. Okay? Just we see, because we, have, we see a hornet doesn't mean he can sting again, because if we've given that forgiveness, then it's gone. We can just say, keep, keep flying by, bye. <laughs> right? The memory is powerless to arouse or to, or to, give, to give anger again. All right? Very important thing to remember. All right? All right, so number one, forgetting means not keeping a record, not keeping a record of the wrong or filing away evidence for future use. <clears throat> you hear that? If you have in your mind a organized filing system, of what people have said about you, done to you, you know, way back when you were a kid, you've kept that in the file. I would urge you to go to Jesus and say, Lord, I need to clean out my filing system. I want it to be gone. You know what I'm talking about, right? Uh, especially if it, it, it's with brothers and sisters that we talked about, or or spouses, it's like, but but you did this, I bet everybody, and we bring up that thing that we said we had forgiven them. It is like bearing the hatchet, right? <laughs> We've always heard that expression. We've even used it a few times ourselves. Make sure when you're bearing the hatchet. You bury the handle. <laughs> right? Bury the handle. That way you can't find it and you can't pull it back out of the ground and start using it. Alright? Super important. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 5. Love does not behave rudely, nor does it seek its own. It is not provoked. Thanks, no evil. So when the evil thought comes into your brain, what do you do? Don't stand there and look at it. Say, Lord, get rid of that thing. Alright? So, number two. Forgetting means refusing to dwell on the event or talk about it every chance we get. That's part of forgetting. Alright? Forgetting means we're not going to dwell on it. We're not going to sit around and say, oh yeah, let's, let's, let's let that pot of stew just simmer for a while. No, no, no. No. Don't let that. I don't care how smelly it nice or nice it smells. You don't let that. We, we want to turn off the heat, ask God to turn off the heat, empty the pot, and get rid of it. Alright? Otherwise, you can get addicted to reliving the past. Alright? And what happens if you all of a sudden, you, you're in, in the middle of the night or whatever, all of a sudden something pops up. And the next time you meet that person, what kind of look do you have on your face? Yeah! I know something's up. He's got a bad, he got out of the wrong side of the bed. Hmm. The only thing we did was 
<laughs> we did the wrong thing of reliving what had happened before. Mm -hmm. Right? It shows on our faces. It shows through our words. It shows through our actions. It will reveal itself if we dwell upon it. We must ask God to remove it entirely and never hang on to it. Amen? Amen. Amen. No, no rubber bands when we give God something that somebody has done for it with us. Uh, there's two texts there, Philippians 4, 8, I mentioned it a little while ago, and then there's Proverbs 17, 9. He who covers a transgression seeks what? Uh, the person who covers transgression seeks what? But, but we all know it's in the Bible, right? The wages of sin is death. What they did was wrong. What they said about me was wrong. So they deserve death. Isn't that right? Don't they deserve death? <laughs> How many of us deserve death? Man. We all deserve death. So if you start pointing a finger at somebody and say, you deserve death, so I'm going to give you justice, what happens? We remove ourselves out of the possibility of receiving the grace that we need. Amen. You hear that? Amen. If you refuse grace for somebody else, we're going to remove it from our own lives. All right? All right. If you need one repeat, or me, I'm going to go back to something. Let me tell me, okay? So, Pastor, just to be clear. Just to be clear. When we bury the hatchet, it also doesn't mean buried into somebody else's back. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Uh -oh. Amen. That's right. No. No. That, sometimes we do that. We bury it in somebody's back. But the hatchet's all the, the ha handle's always out, right? <laughs> So if we didn't hit the right spot, we could try again. No, no, absolutely. You are correct. No, it's got to be given to God. All right, number three. Looking ahead to a fresh, new... All right. We cannot... What does Paul, yeah, Paul say? Forgetting those things which are behind. behind. Where would we go? Going ahead. In circles? No. Go backwards? No, we go ahead. That's right. We go move forward to where God wants us to be. Amen. Amen. Otherwise, we're dealing with Satan's work. Mm -hmm. Zechariah chapter 3. Don't get me talking about that one because I can give a whole sermon on that one. I love that, mess, that thing. So if you don't if you don't know what Zechariah 3 is about, read it. All right? Zechariah is standing there with filthy garments, and who's talking about it? <laughs> the devil's talking about it. Every time we're talking about somebody else or somebody else is talking about us, we are doing Satan's work. He loves bringing up trash. He loves us when we dwell on it. We cannot. We have to move forward. We have to do what God wants us to do. That is not God's work. Amen? Amen. God has a future for us. Uh, Jeremiah 29 11, right? He has a purpose and he has a plan for us. For what kind of future? For a good future. Oh, yes. A good future. Mm -hmm. We must be doing his work. Alright, Philippians 3.13. Brothers and sisters, I do not count myself to have apprehended. Okay? But one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, we reach forward to those things which are ahead. Alright, forgetting number four. Forgetting means saying good things about our offenders and doing helpful deeds for them. Now here's my challenge. If Satan comes up with something negative about somebody else and or about yourself, what should we do? I believe we should ask God for the positive things in another person's life. I will guarantee you it's not as easy as just saying it. The Lord, there's like, they have half a dozen things that are nasty about them. <laughs> then what do we need to do? 
Pray a little more sincerely. Pray a little harder. Stay on our knees until we get the answers we need. Because we need some positive things about that person. And I guarantee you, if Jesus died for that person, which he did, there's got to be something positive in their lives. I'm not going to do a drive through You know, you ever do a drive through and then they don't bring you the right stuff? What do you do? You drive off, right? You've seen those? No, no, we need to stay until God answers our prayer for something positive. Amen. Amen. And I wouldn't leave you that situation until he did that for you. Amen. Because if we don't, Satan knows. Mm -hmm. He knows our soft spot. Amen. Amen. Well, you just bring up that guy or that girl, that, yeah. that, 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 that situation. Yeah. Boy, I'm going to bring that back again. When about the time he's doing his devotional, I'm going to bring it up. Because I know I can derail that, that guy from that, with that. No, we can't give him any, any room for that kind of stuff. He will bring it up at a time when we are willing to talk with God. Amen. And we need to do what Jesus did with temptation. Right? You'll be behind me. Come on. Move on. Alright? Luke chapter 6, 27 and 28. Love your what? Enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. And pray for those who spitefully use you. That's what Jesus wants us to do. That's what he's requesting us to do. I believe if we did more of this, more of God's work, Jesus' work, rather than Satan's work, love, Christ's love, would start to ooze out of our pores. Amen. Amen? Amen. And when God's love starts to ooze out of our pores, you know, Satan can't hold on to us this easy. You ever try to hold on to, you ever try to, I'll mean, talk to the guys here. Anybody ever play football and they've been playing for a long time? Or soccer. Huh? And what happens when you try to reach for somebody? You try to reach for them to tackle them in football, what happens? And they're all sweaty. They get a goal line because we couldn't hold on to them. That's what happens when if we're so imbued with Jesus' love. Mm -hmm. Satan can't hold on to us. Amen. He can't tackle us. Yes. He can't hold us. Mm -hmm. Because Jesus' love is oozing out. Mm -hmm. Alright? Amen. Romans 12, 20 and 21. Therefore, thereby, keep coals of fire on their head. And do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. good. I've shared this one before. There's an awesome thing there. <laughs> when we repay good for evil, it changes us and it changes the other person. Yes. And that's what God does. Number five. Forgetting You know what? I'm going to stop for a second. I'm going to go back. Somebody had a, uh, a question for Clara Barton. Anybody in here know who Clara Barton is? Anybody? Nobody? She found the red cross. Thank you. See there? I thought somebody would. Yes, she found the red cross. So, a friend? A friend? The Red Cross organization? Yeah. Yeah. The one who gives blood? Yeah. The one who asks for your they blood? They do more than that. They do a lot more than that. They do a lot more than that. They help in disasters. Yeah. They help with fires. They help. They, they're there. Yep. So anyway, Claire Barton. Somebody came to her one day and said, you know, don't you remember when so-and-so did something or said something about you? And Claire goes, no. No, 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 no. It happened, and he list, she listed off the dates and the, the situation. Don't you remember? Man, you were you were hurt. You were steamed. You were just... 
And the player says, don't remember. No, 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 you got to remember it. I remember. You, you, you did, did you? And she rattled off some more stuff. And Claire straightened up and said, I remember forgetting it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. And we need to do the same thing. Yeah, man. Well, because the other person is trying to, with gossip, bring back a situation that was not healthy. And we need to do the same. Amen. The remembering part, I forgot. I forgave and I forgot. That's what we need to respond. Amen? Whether it's Satan or somebody else who's doing his work, we need to do the same thing. All right. <laughs> uh, allowing God to erase our painful memories. Allowing God to erase our painful memories. I believe we need to be asking God to do that in our lives. Amen? Yeah. Amen. We can't do it ourselves. I don't care how much, how big, or how new, or how awesome your eraser is, you cannot erase it out of your life. <laughs> Only God can do that. Amen. And we need to ask Him to do that. Genesis chapter 41, verse 51. For God has made me what? Forget. This is talking about Joseph now. Yeah. You know, all the things that happened to Joseph. You remember all of those things? Mm -hmm. Especially his brothers, his blood brothers. <laughs> God has made me forget I like a di different translation. The one down here is even, I like it even better. But it, it, King James says, uh, All my toil and all my father's house. The clear word says it this way For God has made me forget all my troubles and the hurts that have happened. Amen? Amen. <laughs> he didn't forget God's, his father's house, he forgot the God's power. Hurts. The hurts. Because otherwise, when his brothers showed up in Egypt, what would he be done? I say, I think you guys need to sharpen up your swords, and uh, I'm just lining my brothers up here. Boom. That's not out of the question. That's happened many times in, in the times of human history. But Joseph was a changed person. Joseph had been changed by God. Mm -hmm. He wasn't dwelling on what they had done. Yes, he threw a little test in there just to see if they were the same people or not. Mm -hmm. Should I rescue my, my younger brother before something happens to him if they haven't changed? <coughs> but by the grace of God, he had changed his brothers also. Yes. Right? Amen. Amen. And that was a good thing. For Joseph and for his brother. Mm. That's a good thing for us too. Amen. You think of the scoundrels those brothers were. But God changed them. What about us? We need changing by him too, right? Mm -hmm. Amen. Romans 2, 4. It is God's kindness that is meant to lead us to repentance. If you ever got scared by, by what your your sibling said, or by what your parents <coughs> said, that made you tremble in your shoes because it felt like the fires of hell were going to devour you up, and therefore that's why you repented and said you were sorry, guess what? It was worthless. It's worthless. God does not scare us into repentance. Right. He puts out the facts of life there. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't scare us. He doesn't want that kind of repentance. Because <coughs> that kind of repentance doesn't last long. It's worthless. Alright? What changes us? <coughs> what leads us to repentance? God's goodness. Who God is. What he has done for you, and I will just remind you, if you haven't done it already, 
You need to write down all of God's acts in your life. Hmm. Another reason to write everything down that God has blessed and done for you in your life. Amen. Not just remembering that He cares about you, not just remembering that He'll take care of you, but His kindness, His kind acts in our lives is what leads us to repentance. Amen. How can I do this? What did, what did Joseph say to Potiphar's first wife? I mean, come on. If he had held on to the anger and the unforgiveness of his brothers at the time Potiphar's wife had come along, this is my way out. This is my ticket out of here. This is, this is an opportunity. But instead, he said what? How can I sin against God? He had every reason, he had every way out that he could have taken, but he chose not to because he had reconciled with God in his own life, and he had reconciled with his brothers before even seeing them. You hear me? Mm -hmm. And Satan does that. Amen. He uses all the experiences in our lives and then says, here, here's an ice cream cone of another opportunity. Take it. Use it. Lick it and run. <laughs> and it's tempting. It is tempting. But it's not the solution for Joseph or for us. Did you hear me? It is not a solution. And we need to reject it just as he did. <coughs> because it is a sin against God. <coughs> Amen? Amen? Boy, this is really quiet. I have one amen out of that? <laughs> you guys are thinking. Maybe the Holy Spirit is just twisting his influence. Alright, well, I'm going to step a little harder on some toes. Yeah. <laughs> Alright? Just step a little bit harder. So, how can we tell whom we need to forgive? Hmm. Well, I won't leave you just contemplating life. I'm going to make it even go a little bit deeper. All right? Do I often criticize someone? And you have it listed there. So you're probably already ahead of me. <coughs> Do I often criticize somebody? If you often criticize somebody for no good reason, you blow off for no good reason, it's because there's still a part that you haven't asked for that forgiveness for that person. But they haven't asked for it. You ever hear that? <laughs> I've heard that lots of times. But they haven't asked for it. What did Jesus do when they were nailing him to the cross? What did he say? You, you wretched person, you. You don't have any business putting that thing in my skin. No, he said, forgive them for they know not what they do. Amen. Amen. All right. Am I usually uncomfortable around somebody? Do I replay hurtful scenes? We already touched on that. Do I ever plan revenge? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What does the Bible say? Vengeance. Revenge is mine, Vengeance. saith the Lord. And we choose to go down that road. We're really taking over God's, who God is. And that's a big no no. That's a huge no no. Yes. yes. Am I finding other relationships suffering as a result of a hurtful experience? Or forgiving from. Mm. Alright. So. Okay. I need help with a, to say it correctly. This person's name is P-A-C-O. How do you say that? Paco. 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 I heard from a, a Spanish person. Paco. P-A-C-O. Paco? Paco, Paco, Paco. Paco. All right. Well, Paco and his dad, they lived in Madrid, Spain. Mm -hmm. And uh, they had a disagreement. 
They knocked heads really bad. So bad, so, that Paco said, I'm out of here. I'm not going to do what you asked me to do. I'm not going to, no, I'm, I'm, I'm out of here. And by the way, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go be a bullfighter. Okay. Anybody here ever watch bullfighting? Do it for a little bit? People say that football is uh, is rough and, and bad, <laughs> but bullfighting is almost like saying I'm going to commit suicide. Yeah. All right? Yeah. And that's what he said to get at his dad. Mm-hmm. And so they, they left. The boy Paco left. He just took off. They were both angry at each other. None of neither said they loved each other. They just, he just took off and left and never came back. Mm-hmm. And in reality, that was the last thing his dad wanted. Wow. He was desperate to find some way that he could get to <coughs> talk with Paco and say, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's like, it's worse than finding a needle in a haystack. There's no way he could find him. There's no way he could walk all the street, <coughs> all the streets, and find his son. <laughs> so this is what he did. He put an advertisement in the local newspaper, and the advertisement read like this: "Paco, meet me in the Hotel Montana at noon on Tuesday. All is forgiven. Love." Put it in the newspaper. Mm-hmm. Everybody was looking to read it. He, he was like, Lord, you know, help, help Papa to come back. Problem is, that's a popular name in Spain. <laughs> <laughs> so on Tuesday, as the dad, dad was getting close to the motel, he looked around. It was around noon, around, around about four at time, a little bit before. And there were 800 Pacos waiting <laughs> around that motel. Wow. <laughs> they were all there to get forgiveness. <laughs> I mean, that's awesome. Amen. That's, that's terrible all at the same time. <laughs> that is why we need forgiveness in our lives. From others to others is as as Christians and as Seventh Day Adventist Christians, this is the most important thing in our lives that we need to have. That's why Jesus came to die for us so that we could have forgiveness. Amen. We need to give as God has given to us. Amen. 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 I believe. We need to settle this thing once and for all and ask God to do His work in and through us. That's all of us. We have it. If we refuse to forgive ourselves, we are elevating ourselves above God. We talked about that. For no matter what the deed, God has what? Forgiven us. Amen. 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 The most difficult people to forgive are those who are closest to us. Those who are closest to us. Why? Because it has to do with relationships. And the the stronger the relationship, Mm -hmm. the harder it is. Mm -hmm. We want to be in charge. We want to be in control. We want to not, you know, appear weak. I guarantee you, a person who, with God's grace and power, forgives is the strongest person alive. Stronger than Samson, stronger than whoever. With God's power, it makes us the strongest people around. 
One reason we have difficulty forgiving is found in the word resentment. Resentment. They're from, a, from Latin words, which means to feel or to again feel over and over. That's what resentment's about. To feel or to re feel or re again to feel over and over. And that is the part we need to ask God to help us reject and throw out. But we say life is not fair. That's right. Life on this world is not fair. God never said it was. But guess what? Life is a whole lot better if we forgive than if we don't. Mm -hmm. Luke chapter 11, verse 26. We need to fill ourselves with good things. When we ask for things to be taken out of our lives, we need to ask God to fill us with good things. Remember that text? <laughs> What's the context of that text? Anybody know? Person who had a demon? <laughs> and they were, the demon was oh. evicted? <laughs> and the house was clean and yes. organized but empty. If we don't replace the stuff that God has, we've asked God to take out of our lives, if we don't replace it with something good, what would happen to that person who was empty and clean and more demons came back? We cannot be empty. That's why I, I disagree with no, they say, oh, this no, sit back in an easy chair and empty your mind. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, Satan likes empty places. Yes. <laughs> if we're full of Jesus, if we're full of God, if we're full of His Word, if we're full of His graces, if we're full of that, Satan can't come back into. We need to fill our lives full of who God is. Amen? Amen. If we focus on Jesus, the lover of the universe, we become loving. loving. So our focus has to be on Jesus, who is loving. Amen. If we focus on Jesus, the forgiver of my soul, we become forgiving. That's the point. If we focus on Jesus, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, we become joyful. Joyful. The worst thing about us Christians is we haven't taught our face muscles to say face smiling because of the joy inside of us. And so sometimes we have these faces that are long and groovy. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with thinking, right? There's nothing wrong with contemplation. But we should be filled with the joy of God. Amen. And it should come radiating through. Our eyes, our lives, our words, all of it. Alright, so, the, snack, the, the acronym, sorry. You have that there on your sheet. Anybody know it? Sorry. <laughs> Well, then I'll help you out so you don't have to be sorry about sorry. Alright? F stands for? Soon. Get out your pens. You gotta fill it in. Soon. Alright? F stands for soon. O stands for? Offer. I think I heard that back there. Good. And the next one is the R? Regret. Regret. Soon offer regret. Restitution. And restitution. I will tell you about the time I was in a in a grocery store with my mom. She was ahead of me checking out. 
And uh, maybe I told this story, so I did betray Diane. And so they always have things that are super tempting for kids, yeah. probably for adults too, but for kids right along the aisle there, you know, as you're waiting. And so my parents would not allow me to chew gum. It was not good for my teeth, and the list goes on and on and on. And I yielded to the temptation to just help myself to a package of gum. <laughs> I put it in my pocket and walked out with my mom, who hadn't paid for it. Neither have I. I got all the way home, helped her unload the car. I'm not sure how in the world or what in the world, but all of a sudden she realized that I had something in my hand. <laughs> you know what we had to do? Let me go about this car. She told me to get into that car with that tone of voice that I knew why I let her <laughs> obey. <laughs> we got back in the car, we went back to the <laughs> store, and she sat behind <laughs> the wheel. You go in there and you give that back. That was the worst walk I ever had. Nah, I had one of them. The worst <laughs> walk I ever had. But it, taught, still, it, it taught you something. Different. I still remember that walk. I did too. <laughs> <laughs> and it's almost getting close to 60 years ago. <laughs> yeah. It's fresh in my mind. Is I can still see that man in his face when I hand it back. <laughs> yep. Yep. Restitution. Yep. We don't like it, but guess what? It's the best thing. It, 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 it makes a remembrance oh, yes. that yes. will stick with you for a long time. Eternity. Yourself. Oh. That's right. Why is yourself? yourself. Soon offer regret and restitution yourself. All right. Let's wrap it up. Anybody need that? You got them all? Yeah, all right. Our words of apology should be spoken simply, specifically, and briefly. I don't believe just going to somebody and saying, I'm sorry, is really good enough. I know it's hard to get those words out. I understand that. But what are you sorry about? Sorry I got caught? No, that's not good. What are you sorry about? I'm sorry I took that. I'm sorry I said that. Whatever that is. Right? Be as specific as possible. And that includes not just with people, but with God too. Amen. Yes. Yeah, God knows everything. Right. He knows what you're thinking. Mm -hmm. He knows what you're sorry about. Still be specific mm -hmm. with God. Amen. Because it does something inside of us when we specify what we're sorry about. Amen. Okay? Amen. And briefly, don't go on and 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 on. Okay, there's the two extremes. I'm sorry, please forgive me and turn around and leave. No, that's not good enough. But don't spend a half hour of the person's time saying, I'm sorry about that, and that, and that, and that. That's not good either. Do it briefly, specifically, but briefly. All right? Forgiving frees us and brings healing. <clears throat> if we do not forgive, <clears throat> I would guarantee that health-wise, we will suffer. If we do not forgive, health-wise, our, our bodies will tell us because our health will start to go down. I don't know, you walk around St. Louis at all? Look at people's faces. I wish I could set up a seminar 
like this on the streets of St. Louis. Because you walk down the streets and you look at people's faces, they're discouraged, they're depressed, they're, you can see it oozing out of them. The good news is there's forgiveness. God can give us forgiveness. He can give us forgiveness for others. It's a free gift. He wants us to have it. That's part of the good news. Yes. Right? To share the good news. Amen. And as we forgive, that's teaching somebody else to do the same thing. You hear me? Amen. So, no, you're not just doing it for yourself. Every time you address it with somebody that you did something against, you're teaching them how to do it. You're discipling them. You're mentoring them. You're helping them receive good news inside of their lives. But well, I didn't talk about the Sabbath. That will come. Well, if there's a blockage of resentment and unforgiveness, the Sabbath won't even it won't even show up on their radar screen. Mm -hmm. You hear me? Yes. Especially if it has to do with us. Mm -hmm. Well, that's that person who just told me off the other day. Why should I talk about why should he I listen to him about a Sabbath when he can't even deal with me? <laughs> right? I'm kind of real quiet in here. <laughs> Alright, I better jump off that ship. <clears throat> Forgiveness frees us and brings healing. Therefore, if the sun makes you free, <laughs> you'll be free indeed. We want to be free? Amen. Or do you want those hatchets hanging around your neck? Well, forgiving heals relationships, it builds relationships, it completes relationships between God, us, and others. Amen. Matthew 18. Just so you know, Matthew 18 isn't, we don't go to somebody and say, now, Matthew 18 says, you need to agree with me where we disagree. No, it does not. It says two people who are saved by God need to sit down and they need to talk things out. That's what it says. It doesn't say, I got the trump card and you need to say yes. We need to listen to each other. We need to talk with each other. We need to come to some kind of agreement with God's power. That's what it says. Amen? Amen. I do commandment I give to you that you love one another. I believe that's what God wants in our lives. 